Greek mythology rages to life in mythic battles pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at beastofwar.com. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at the Flakpanzer IV. The four. Whirlwind? The Flakpanzer IV. Flakpanzer IV, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't read it as, don't read Roman numerals as letters. I, no, I always do because I can't read Roman numerals. Yeah, so, the flag, so the Flakpanzer IV or the Whirlwind, as we're going to call it, or you can call it the Verbalwind if you wish. Verbalwind? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is basically a Panzer IV where they thought, well, um, we need something that is going to drive along with the main tank force, but gives them some AA cover. So the, the verbal wind was basically, they built a, a weird looking little turret with four 20mm cannons in it. Well, put more DACA. Who doesn't like more DACA? This is true. But this also helped with the whole, um, well, you actually see it throughout the entire German army. They always have good AA. Right. They always ha invested quite a lot in anti-air. Because they've seen how effective their own air power was, and they went, we can't let anyone else have that sort of coverage. Uh, so they had half-tracks covered in it, AA guns, um, their MG-34 is always on the top of the tanks, used to be able to sort of pivot right up so they could shoot, you know, will willfully, hopefully, into the sky with a machine so gun. So if there's something up there, boom. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of studies put into it as well by the, the, the Waffenamt, the, the German sort of arms ministry and stuff. The Waffenamt. This sounds, this sounds like something you'll go to, like, I don't know, a radio shack and pick up for your rock band. So they went to the Waffenamt, yeah, and they came back with like, this little 20 millimeter cannon. <laughs> and we thought, that was a great idea, Hans. Why don't we put four of them on the Panzer IV? <laughs> Any, anyway, what I was saying is, <laughs> apart from channeling my inner German, uh, they yeah, don't... Yeah, John, John your, your inner German is from Hello, Hello. <laughs> you would like to go for a ride in my little tank? Um... <laughs> So they, they did a lot of studies into the effectiveness of AA, yeah. and they came to a conclusion that a lot of the other countries didn't. Okay. They went, it doesn't matter if they actually hit anything. They, right. said, they realized that AA was essentially useless because it was hardly ever going to hit anything, right. especially the smaller caliber stuff, 20 millimeter, 37 mil. So what, did it become more of a deterrent? Yeah, what they decided to do was only issue flak battalions with 100% tracer round. Okay. So when you consider a 20 millimeter of fire at like 300 rounds per minute or something like that, you put four of them together on a quad mount and it's firing away up into the sky yeah. with nothing but tracer. Yeah. That P-51 that's coming down to do a strafe is going to go, ah, oh, it's a lot of, no, we'll just, we'll just try for another angle because there's just so much stuff coming up and, and the fact that he can see it, that's the deterrent element mm. of it. So it became psychological warfare. In a sense, yeah, because if you're diving down in a little plane that's made out of aluminium, sheet metal, and all that, and you've you've got the guns to deal with it, yeah, do but, I want to fly right at it? But if there's four of these things sat nearby and they're all firing tracers at you, well, you that's the 16, 20 millimeters, you are going to be scared. You're you're going to have that moment of uh oh. <laughs> and even if it only puts his aim off so that he doesn't hit his targets on the first strafe, mm. it doesn't matter. That's if the AA has done its job, and they invested a lot of research into this to come up with that conclusion. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the thing. Some of the German tech, you look at it and you go, but for why? And so now we know for why. There, there's a lot of rhyme and reason behind most of the German vehicle designs. Most. Because it's big and pretty and I want it. Once Ferdinand Porsche got involved, it was entirely ruined. Really? <laughs> yeah, Ferdinand Porsche, just basically, he was a good friend of Hitler. And he said, what we need is a tank that weighs 200 tons and has a gun that points straight up in the air so that if a plane happens to fly right over the top of it, it can get it. And you're like, Porsche really... Did he really do this? He came up with all crazy things. He wanted to put a 20mm single mount on the top of a, a mouse or a 37mm on top of the mouse when it was being designed. He thought it needs its own anti-air because it's so big that right. he was only going to give it one gun that could only shoot practically straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Porsche was a, was a lot of people, a lot of tank experts say he's the, the mad scientist of the whole, the, the whole arms procurement side of things. Uh, see, I don't know. During World War II, there were so many crazy things made. There was, but you'll find that Porsche was behind the ones that failed the most. Oh, well... I suppose never he designed a, a Tiger that didn't work on test day. Well, that was a petrol electric design, and that was 
utter genius for the time, but was way ahead of its own time. That's that's the problem with it. So what, was he thinking of stuff that they just didn't have the tech for yet? Yeah, he Porsche was all about hybrid drives. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's crying about hybrid cars now and full electric cars and stuff like that. Porsche was making tanks that were hybrid back in the day. So what, in before hybrids? He was actually... He wasn't the first. The really? French were the first in the First World War. They had a petrol electric tank, and I was like, "What? What? When? Yeah, there's um, uh, when was I there was... something you saw when you went to tank fest? Yes, yes, I got to see the Saint Chamon drive around, and it's apparently a petrol electric. It makes the it's it it's a crying shame that it doesn't make a really nice sound because really? it drives around going, <laughs> and it's just that's all you hear is the electric motors, and you're like, that's just weird. Stop it. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, back to the whirlwind. Yes, so, less tangent. Uh, do you know who its designer was? No. <laughs> I don't think I'll really actually know. Not heavy armor for John. No, but I could bet because it was a, a, a functional design mm. that was built as cheaply as possible on an existing tank chassis, mm. I would imagine that it was someone like uh, either Krupp was working on it, mm. Rheinmetall probably had a little bit of a hand in there too, possibly with the cannons. I don't know who made the 20 millimeters. Mm. Um, but I'd say Krupp, MAN and stuff like that, probably ben Daimler Benz maybe had a, a play with it as well, but mm. I bet it was based off a specification that came in from the field. Okay, fair I, enough. I bet a lot of commanders went, our tank forces don't have enough AA or don't have effective AA, Yeah. so we need something that goes with that. Yeah. They probably took a bunch of the older Panzer IV chassis, probably the, the Ausch Ds or something like that, or maybe even the As, modified them up a bit and stuck this turret on the top and went, it's as good as what it needs to be. Fair enough. All right, well, let's, we've, we've ended enough. Let's get a look at the kit. <laughs> so we've got the, the standard resin tracks that you're going to get with most Warlord resin kits. Yep. They're good. They're simple. They work. And you get two thereof. Yeah, now one, one point when you come to build these things, make sure you get an old toothbrush and get in behind the wheels and stuff because there, there's a little bit of a resin film. Yeah, that just of... that, that little bit of flash that's sort of going between the mold. Yeah, so if you get a bit of warm water or some soap, Get an old toothbrush and scrub that away. That should come out just fine without needing a knife. Yeah. And they are marked left and right, mm -hmm. so you can't really get it wrong. Otherwise, it's left and right looking from the back of the tank forward or from the front of the tank back. Ooh, that's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I bet it's when you're... I bet it's the actual, like, driver's side. Not, right. not driver's side. All right. So, All you need to know, right, yeah. is the, the drive wheel goes to the front. All right. The sprocket um, wheel goes to the front. I assume that's this one. That's the front, yes. Yeah. So you can't go wrong if so long as the sprockets to the front. Okay. On on, on a Panzer IV. On Panzer IV. Okay. And Panzer III, and Panther and Tiger for that matter too. In yeah. fact, most German tanks, nearly all German tanks. Okay. Sprocket to the front. <laughs> most British sprocket to the back. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. What about American? Oh, mostly to the front. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain design ethos for that? Just while I, I show off the hole here. You're you're just picking my brain now. Yeah. yeah. Um, the British put everything in the back because they decided that that's where everything should be in a tank because all your fancy expensive mechanical stuff yeah. might not get destroyed if you get hit in the front of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You might lose the crew, but you might actually be able to save the tank. Ah, fair enough. Uh, American philosophy and stuff just seems to be whatever worked. Ah, I see. And it, it also made the likes of Shermans and stuff easier to maintain because if you got hit in the transmission, you unbolted it and bolted a new one on. Ah, I see. All right, now here's something I'm noticing. I'm going to go to my other camera. Mm -hmm. Look at how tight this turret is. So if I get my hands out of the way. Yeah, there's three dudes in there. And do you want to know the best bit? What? Only one of them's actually pulling a trigger. The guy at the back? Yeah, the other two are loaders. Both of the, this guy and then this guy are just there to load stuff. Yeah, because you've got four rapid fire cannons there. And each of those guns has a, is it a 15 round magazine? It's a, right. it's a box magazine. It's fed with box magazines. Each gun has a box magazine on it, so they've got four right. to get all cannons firing. All right, important question then. Can they be reloaded while they're firing? No, they have to let each magazine run dry. But the way you'll find with quad guns, right. or quad mounted guns, is they don't fire all at the same time. They don't go bang all four, bang all four, bang all four. They go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, in like a sort of a... Yeah, so the, an those 15 pattern. rounds actually equates to what, 120? Or no, sorry, sorry, no, 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 60. No, 60, so 60 rounds, so you're... Do math, Justin. Yeah, so you're putting 60 rounds out every time you pull the trigger and let the magazines run empty. Right. Now, usually they probably would let the mags run empty. Right. Um, but I'd say if one gun either jammed or whatever, one of the loaders would rack the slide, get the mag out, and 
sort right. of fix it while the other three are still firing. Uh, dangerous because the solenoids, so they're, they're controlled by little electrical solenoids that right. pr press the trigger. Dangerous because if you start to reload that thing and the solenoid is still going, it might just want to take a piece of your hand or it might, it might want to do something really crazy and start firing before you've got the magazine all the way in. <laughs> you know, something crazy like that. All right, now, uh, with this being one of the older Warlord kits, whenever you look at the, the barrels, it is literally just four little sticks of metal that well, you're going to be popping on. They, they do have a little bit of detail, because you see down at the bottom where they join them in the gates there, yeah. there is the little bit of floating that you get on the 20mm barrel, ah, and it's, it's also sort of flashed out a little bit. Yeah. See, the good thing with the, the, the older metal ones is, if there's a little bend in them, you can just straighten them out, just... Apply a little bit of pressure to them. Yeah, but Just remember, remember within reason as well. You can't keep bending white metal for yeah infinite time. Yeah, a lot of people would just replace that. Really? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people just replace that. Okay, so we have a little bit of an accessory sprue here. So mm -hmm. we've got a little MG thirty two. I'm going to guess here thirty four. Thirty four. Okay. Yeah, it, that that'll be the the hull gun. Okay. Uh, a couple of road lights. Yep. So there should actually be another one there. It's actually fell off the ah, I see. the piece, but it's it's there anyway. So yeah, we have it. But that's. There should be two that. two of those, yep. which are the, essentially the headlights, and then this little one that looks like a bicycle seat helmet sort of thing. This? That's your um, convoy light. Uh-huh. And then these? Those are your front tow hooks. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. We have one more little accessory sprue here with a few bits that I cannot identify. Yep, so the piece in the middle yep. is the front plate of the turret. Okay. The larger piece beside it, this? that's part of the um, gun sight. Okay. And the gun sight itself is that little small piece at the end. I see. So, because this is an older kit, the instructions are on the back of the box, not inside. No, and it's pretty straightforward too. Yeah, because it is just put the tracks on the side. You can actually see that uh, drive wheels to the front, mm -hmm. and then it's just showing you how the turret goes together really quickly. You also get the three heads for your three crew, but they're so tiny, I'm not even going to try and show these off. You'll not see much until we have it built and maybe a bit of primer on it too. Yeah. No. Uh, Warlord have continued with this little baggie of stuff, which I think is fantastic. So, if I move this out of the way, and I'll open this up. So, you will get... Your smoke and flames. Smoke and flames. You actually see if it's putting out smoke or burning to death. Yep. Which is always good. And, and then, then you get the info card. Stack card, which I think are great now. Because yeah. these are going to make bolt actions so much easier to play. Absolutely. I'm I'm going to steal that off you a little second. I want to look at it. Oh, you're looking at stats. It might. You, are no, you doing what I normally do? No, it might teach me something about the the thing that I don't know. Yeah. Now you also get your little transfer sheet, which is, yeah, with all of your unit markings that you're possibly going to want to use. I'm glad that Warlord is starting to put in the the black with yellow outline numbers because really? I am sick to death of the black with white outlines. Right. <laughs> Nearly that, every. That's a little mundane. Nearly every kit, uh, nearly every German armor kit I've come across has yep. been the, you know, it's the black number with the white outline. And it's like, but the Tigers had like, Other red, stuff? had red and white. And so like, I've seen some that had like a lovely sort of almost a sky blue with a yellow outline. And I was like, what? That's, that's, pr that's pretty sick considering that it's only a number. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting really bad into this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're also getting three little bases to put your smoke clouds onto. Yep. Right, so that's the bits. What did John learn? Uh, nothing. Nothing, really? No, I, I didn't pick up anything that... It's, okay. a, it's a very brief like, like sort of flavour text. Okay. Uh, weapons, though, it's light auto cannons and a medium machine gun. Yep. So, and the special is the four turret mounted HD1. Hmm, interesting. It's just a nice AA gun to actually put on the tabletop. If you want to add something to your German forces that's different, you know. And incredibly good anti-infantry, I would imagine, too. Be possibly, possibly. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, John, I'm going to send you a way to build this, mm -hmm. and I'm going to research the rules a little bit. All right, buddy, we're back. John, you have built the whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Pretty good? Yeah, it's it's a pretty intuitive kit. You don't need any instructions for it, really. Mm. Um, the only time I did was like, well, how does the site go on, and how does that fit? And then it was like, oh, okay. okay. I do have one question. So, mm -hmm. looking at it here, all the guns seem to be equi equidistant. Yes. So none of them are back as if they're racked. Would these have had a fair slide on them? Could you model this so that some of them are a little further back as if it's mid-firing? Uh, the recoil on the 20mm is probably about 6 inches, so eh, you could do it a little bit. It might look a little odd. Okay. 
But so to, uh, would it look less purposeful, more accidental than if you did it? Yeah, potentially. And the other thing is, I think the the quad twenty millimeters fired one at a time. Right. So it would have been in a, a pattern of a constant fire of one gun firing each time. Ah, I see. Depending on how they they timed it, I assume. Yeah. Well, I have to say, uh, let me get this for the other camera. Whenever this turret is filled, let me move this out of the way. You do not have a lot of room in here. You really don't. You really don't. I mean. I, I really doubt if this would have been given to the more portly of the German forces. No, certainly not. Um, but there, there was several different types of anti-aircraft tank and vehicle on the field. So, I mean, these would have been uh, what I would have considered the most close to the front sort right. of units. Further back, you'd have had stuff like the, um, the Panzer IV Ostfind, which is like a single 37 millimeter on it. Right. You'd have had the mobile wagon, which was either a quad 20 or a 37 millimeter on a Panzer IV, but it folded out into a big platform. Ah. So it had like fencing around it, and then that dropped out to make a big platform to let the crew move around it easily. Right. And what, was there not one where they used the old uh, the trucks? Ah, uh, they had, um, well, they had half track mounted ones, and they had uh, a few of the old trucks as well. They, but that was literally taking the little toad one and chuck, putting it on the back of a, yeah. a truck. Yeah, essentially. But. Yeah, no, I remember playing one of those in War Thunder. Lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just do, 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 do. dead. See, the the German AA is impressive because it goes from twenty millimeter, which no one really cares about, to thirty seven mil, which is a bit more concerning. Mm -hmm. And then you have the eighty eights. Yeah. And like there was a lot of a lot of designs again. Ferdinand Porsche uh -huh. was working on stuff like twin eighty eights or you know stuff How like that. How do you that. twin an eighty eight and make it suffer the recoil properly? You double the crew. No, no, I'm, you have, I, I'm talking mechanically here. The, the actual the, recoil off an 88 is pretty substantial. It's about a, it's about two foot, two and a half foot. Yeah, so you double like the, the actual amount of force pressure that's being applied there if you fire two shells at the same time from make, the same mount. Making, making a mount for it isn't such a big deal because, well, the German Navy did it. Oh, right. And don't forget, the German Navy did stuff like you know twin 6-inch guns and you know 12-inch guns would have been put on a single mount in a turret and stuff like that. So okay. they knew the engineering behind that. I, I still think it would have been highly impractical. It's it's just why would you need two 88s beside each other? Yeah, you're getting an increased rate of fire, but you're also doubling the crew of the thing. Mm -hmm. So you were going from uh, one loader per gun to two loaders per gun because yeah. they had to keep the rate of fire up, and the only way they could do that was get more people to throw yeah. the shells in the thing. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the thing. This is before like auto loaders and stuff, isn't it? No, auto loaders were about. Really? They were, the, the Germans were playing with them. Oh, right. Uh, they had an auto-loading system in a few of their aircraft, which didn't work very well. Mm. Um, and don't forget, like you had plenty of automatic cannons at the time, so it didn't matter so much. Yeah, I suppose, but I'm, I'm, I'm literally talking about a turreted tracked vehicle with an auto-loader in it at the time. I don't, I don't remember anything existing. The, the, there was experiments, but okay. nothing ever went into the field as far as I know. Okay. As far right. as armoured vehicles go, nah, it didn't yeah. happen for a long time. Yeah, now the rules for this particular little vehicle mm. are a little odd. So it has the flak, yep. special rules, so yeah, it's good at taking down aircraft. But it's got essentially an auto cannon on it, which I find a little strange, because you only get two shots out of it, mm -hmm. and that you've got 420 mils there. I would expect the four shots. Yeah. So I'd nearly expect it to count as two auto cannons if you're shooting at a ground target. It's a little weird, but having a, a decent, cheapish tracked vehicle that you can lay down on the field with a medium machine gun and an auto cannon is never a bad thing, especially on a medium hull on the Panzer IV. Yeah, it's still a medium tank. It's still a German medium tank, which yep. means they are quite resilient. Oh, they're fierce. Yeah. They're fierce. If you come up against an infantry force or light armoured force, this thing will just munch through it. Yeah, I can, I can imagine wanting to house rule that this thing just actually fires at the rate of fire I would expect it to, and you just give it four auto cannons. Uh, give it four light auto cannons and just have it. Shots. Yeah. You would want to up the points a fair wee notch. You probably would, but I think it would be fair. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, drop your comments in below. Have you used the Whirlwind in your games of bolt action? Are they good? Are we maybe just talking crap here and they're actually not very good on the tabletop for your tactics? Uh, we'll move on. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.